today we are going to be doing the particle emitter node just basics i'm not going to go through all the settings but something that you have enough for each group to generate some nice effects let's get to it <laughs> And let's just increase the clip duration to 10 because I'm going to do a bit of a, an example. Change. And we go to the Fusion page. Drag the media out here. I you can get the particle emitter from three sources. Control space bar or shift space bar. Type P emitter. I've already typed P M here. P emitter and click add. That's one way. You can get it from the toolbar here. Another way. Then you can go to effects. Under tools. Go to particles. CP emitter. Particle nodes here. And CP emitter here. You add that here. So let's delete this too. And let's close the effects sound. If we drag this particle emitter to the viewer, we see it doesn't show. It has to go through a particle renderer node. Particle render. Connect that here and connect this to the viewer. We have that going there. Let's go to the particle emitter node and um, let's just go through a few of the options here. Good enough for us to set up like a particle emitter animation thing. Right. Let's start from, let's start from here. Controls. Under controls, you see number of particles. This number means the number of particles is going to generate per frame. So for each frame, it's going to generate a particle, 10 particles, 10 particles, all adding up to each other. If I go here, let's zoom in here, go here to so 200, and let's click out to see this dots here. So at this point, this is the first frame. If we zoom in a whole lot more, if we count these particles, we'll see that they are 10. To make sure these particles are a bit more visible, let's go to particle limiter, I'll go to style and change this from point to blob. And um, let's go to size and increase the size a wee bit. And zoom up a little. Let's see the size, make it that way. And this P render, let's make it 2D so you can see it better. I'll go through all the options I just went through just now. Subsequently, let's just move on. Go to particle emitter, increase the size to 0.5. And then you can zoom in a little bit, let's say 100, so you can see the particles. So I click out of there. You see the number of particles here are 10 based on the particle emitter settings under control. So for each frame, you have 10 additional particles. If I move forward by one frame, he adds 10 more particles, 10 more particles to the viewer. That's how that one works. Number variance means that if I add this number variance as I've added here, and let's make it, let's say two, it means for each frame, it will add between eight to 10 particles. That will be determined randomly. So the next frame, you could add eight, you could add nine. So it makes it look a bit more organic if they are not the same number of particles that is generated per frame. Lifespan is typically 100 by default. It means for the length of the comp. There are times when you want to extend the lifespan to be way more than the length of the comp, sometimes shorter. So that's what that is about. Then lifespan variance, you can vary the lifespan such that some particles, if I decrease the, let's say 20, if I say this is 20, for example, it means that there are smart particles that will probably die off at 80%. Some will die off at 85. So between the range of 80% to 100% will have different particles die off at different times. This also lends to making the whole particle generation system seem kind of organic, depending on the style you want to do. Right. And position variance, you can change how that is generated by frame. It will be the places where the particles are going to pop up from. Uh, 
right? Let's go to velocity. You can increase the velocity. By default, it goes in that direction. If I play this now, you see the particles just keep generate moving in that direction. I can change the velocity variance so it looks a bit more chaotic. Then this inherit and inherit variance, let's keep it. Then angle, you can change the angle of the velocity so it moves. That's pretty straightforward. If I change angle variance, so it looks like it's scattered and all that. That's it for velocity, then rotation. If, we, if this object were not circles, let's say I change the style to the line, for example, and I increase the size of the line to two, let's say now go to controls and I go to rotation and I go to this, the edge rotation will make much with the first, but I do this, I see that it's rotating, particles are rotating that way. Then the Z, so it's it's changing the direction where the particles are pointing. That's how that works. Then spin, what is self-explanatory, just spins the particles in random ways. You can change the variance, you can do Y and all that. This, so all this kind of pretty straightforward stuff. Double click, double click to reset all of them. So this looks a little more sane. Good, let's move on. Let's move velocity, let's leave that for now. Okay, so we just have that generated. Let's stop that animation. Now we're done with the control tab. We're gonna skip sets. We're gonna go to style. Remember we changed that to line. So here in the style, you define the shape each of the particle by default it is point so you see tiny dots they're not very visible let me go here and go to uncheck check on the list so it's dark so you see dark points there you can change it to bitmap 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 creates an input for the particular meter node where you can feed in any image and speak so if i drag a background node here i make the color white and i feed in the rectangle mass I drag this to the viewer, the see this rectangle mark. Let me move this to fit. So you see it cuts that across the bulb. Let's say I decide to add another rectangle mask to this rectangle mask. And so this rectangle mask, and I decide to turn it like that. So we have the rectangle, we have the background looking like this. Let's feed this into the particular meter and drag the renderer into the right viewer. And then we go to particle emitter. See the size controls. I can reduce the size. So if we zoom in a bit and then go here, I'm zooming through the say 100. You see that each of the particle is this replicated across the board. So you determine the type of particle this particle will generate. You can feed it an arrow, you can feed it a butterfly, you can feed it whatever it is. Particle emitter will just push it out as particles. That's how bitmap works. Then we go to blob. We've talked about blob already. There is the difference between blob and point is blob has size controls. Point doesn't. And point is less system intensive than blob. Right. So that's how that works. Can change the size and all that. I'll get in size control subsequently. We go to brush. Brush are like built-in images for built-in particle types. Right, so if you go to brush, you can select anything you want to affect it. Flick, then let me uncheck and go here and um, uncheck this overlay. This increases the size of this, so you see the snowflake. So we can pick anything we want on here. Some of them are nice, some of them just look weird, that kind of thing. So, yeah, smile, the smileys, you know, so pretty straightforward stuff. Then they go to line, we've used, sorry, line, we've used line already, you can change the size, you know, so it looks nice and all that. Then we go to end gone, end gone and just images, circle, hard, circle, soft edge. You can change the number of size this thing has, you can change it to 10 size, you can increase it by going on here and typing 20. It's a 20 sides and all that. So that's just down to you, whatever you want to do, then the hexagon, the end hexagon with um, soft edges. You can change it from being a 
it, this month, yeah, from being a, an hexagon to, I don't know, whatever it is, how many sides one is to have. Um, then we move on to this. This is just like, if I click on here, it's a starry shape, but with feathered edges. This is a starry shape with inner feathered edges. And this is just a circle that has seriously sharp edges. That's that for end guns. These are just options. You can pick whatever it is you want on here and all. Let me go to point cluster. Now this point cluster is different from point. If I go to point, fewer particles. If I go to point cluster, way more particles. What this does is if I, for each point that displays, this thing displays five more particles around that particle. So you have five more, five times more particles on display on the screen when you use point cluster. This could probably be used in situations where you want to create a situation where the point spawns even more points. But um, that's just to let you know how that works. You can change the number of points and increases and change the number of variance. Yeah, so that's it for that. Then under color controls, you can change the color of the particle, which is pretty straightforward. Click on here, bam, we click OK, and then we have particles. Let's change this to blob so we see it clearly. Then you can twirl down color variance. On that color variance, what this does is the way we have described variance, you can go here and drag this here. What this means is it is going to, between minus 0 0.238 and 0, it's going to add what a, a value randomly between this and 0 to the value of red to the particle here. If I drag it a bit more so you see the color changes. Some of them have lower values of red, some of them have the value of red that is one. That's how that spreads across. Same thing across green, blue variance, alpha variance, that's transparency variance. Right, so that's how that works. Then we scroll down color over live controls. You can, apart from what we did here, let's set this back to the default. From what we did here, if I click on here and I go to here and I click on here, let's say I click here and I add red. It means for the life of each of the particle, you know, we set the life. Let's go back to controls. The lifespan for each of control is 100. Let's set it to like 50%. So 50, so 50% 50 of this gone by here, some of the particles are going to start dying, right? So if I go to style, it means by the time this particle hits 50 percent so would have turned to a shade of red red overlaid on the particle we already particle color red this, this described here let's say we set this back to white so we see the effect better so if i go here and i play the the particles are moving too fast for us to see that so i'm going to go back to controls and go to velocity, where is it, where is it? Let's reduce velocity by a whole lot. So that we are going to see the effect. So you see the particle is now, you can now see the particle is moving and it going from white to red. There are instances where you want to do this kind of thing. Let's stop the animation. You can do this across and whatever color you pick here, of course, you can adjust here using the sliders. I'll just go directly here to change that color. We can add as many points we want over the lifetime of the pair. Click on this and I go there. Let's go bling. Let's go to this part. Go here. Let's go with green. So you see it's this is some nice color changes and all that, depending on what you want to do. And go crazy with this. Then we go to size controls. We've done size already. Size variance. We know how that will work. Yeah, so if I go there, I was going to make sure that it will ensure the size of this thing varies across the generation. Okay. So for size variance, of course, you can adjust it to make you to give it different size of the blob. I said drawing this up here. So I play it, see that different sizes of the blob appears and all that. It's not so obvious in the movement here, but yeah. The click on that to set it over there. Size to velocity, you can, if you increase this, 
the particles, let's say I scroll up, go to controls for velocity. Let's say I do this variance thing for velocity, right? And I play this. Let's now go to style. Right. If I now go down to the size and I see size to variance, I increase it. The particles and increase it to very large amount. The particles that have a newer speed are going to have a smaller size. The ones that have a higher speed will have a larger size. That's how that's how this works. Then the size to Z scale. The particles that are closer to me are going to be bigger. The ones that are smaller are going to be the ones farther. Now this size of a life is interesting. If I drag this down here, it means when the particle is generated, it's going to be very tiny. In the middle of the animation, it gets big. Let's say I'll say I drag this down. So it means when it starts generating, it's small and it increases over life. Then it drops down to zero. Can't really trace the, the stuff. Now let's go to fade controls. So fade controls. It means at the beginning, you want it to not just appear, you want it to just fade in, slowly fade in, or fade off. And then how you want it to happen is so you drag it to the middle here. And I believe this, you see that it just fades in. Then towards, let's say I drag this to the middle here. So this affects each of the particles. So you see them just gradually fade off. So it's kind of gentler as against it just disappearing from the screen. That's for fade controls. Double click on this to reset it. Let me go to merge controls. This I'm going to skip for now. Scroll down. She moved my expiration on this. I can get to it later on, but I don't want this video to be too long. Now that we've done the style, we go to the region. Now by default, you notice that this, there's this circle here. These particles have been generated from this circle region. You can also change the region where this is generated into another shape. I go here and I go to Let's skip this here for now. Let's go. To, if I say all, the full screen is going to be the, the point from which it generates the particle. If I click, so the particle is just move across the screen. If it's nice, it could be an effect you want to do, right? Then we go to this here. You can go there, there. So the particles are generated from this image that is just i just drew on the screen so you can generate the particles from the custom image that you draw on the screen using the bezier curl bezier i don't know whatever how you pronounce that i don't know anyway back to bitmap then if i click bitmap there's another point that now appears here so i can i can draw a custom shape from which i want these particles to generate from right the background here to this and I go back to fit so it's generating it there's this you see the shape here this thing is kind of formed in a very weird way around here I go here and I go to particles I increase the number you see that kind of forms the shape of this so it's generated from if I play it the particles are generated from this shape right so this can come in handy sometimes when you want to dissolve a particular shape or image and all that. Moving on, let's go to back to region. You can change this to cube, right? You can change this to this is for a three D environment. You can change this to line, so you generate it across the line. You can sorry, you can generate it from a mesh. Now this is a three D mesh. You can import a three D mesh. And the particles be generated from that 3D mesh. So that works. The options there are just relate to it. I'm just going to skip on this and move on. Rectangle, obvious what that is about. Then you can move the, the, the rectangle around and all that. from rotate it. That kind of thing. Then you can go to sphere, which is the defaults that we had before. That's just about it for particle detail. If you go to P render, I just want to go through this pretty briefly. Now for particle render, you can either generate it in 3D or in 2D. If I go here and I say 3D, it changes significantly how it looks. I say with P meter, reduce the size. Let's go to style, reduce the size of from um, collapse this, reduce the size in this still. So. 
we get to see some globs and that bat. Chuck this. Chuck this. That. And then let's zoom in a bit. See what we're working with. And Chris is sorry, the bits. So there we go. See that? So that's how it works. This 3D now, I can't connect this to the media out. I have to bring in a 3D renderer node to connect that here. And then I'll look to connect that here. Then we can see it in media out. Now that we have a Ah, a mild understanding of particular meter nodes. I hope you understand what I've done so far. Let me delete all this. Let's just do a, a sharp example. One quick one. Let's drag a particular meter node here. Drag a particle rendering node. So connect that to that so you can see what we're working with. Let's make it a simple view up. Lose the text start. Let's make this some um, fit. And um Let's be render. Let's just make it 2D for what we want to do. Now, before we set that up, this particular example I'm giving is in response to what a subscriber requested. So we're just going to go through that motion. Let's go to media pool. So I downloaded, and let's see, I downloaded a heart image. Let's see, heart. Let's drive that here. And that's the view of it. Don't leave this hard image. And let's there like a background node here. Put this on top of the background node and try this merge here. And go to this merge. Reduce the size. The size something like that. And I want to draw on top of this. So what I'll do is I'll bring in a polygon node. And then start drawing. I just want to chase this little this heart shape. All right, so so that's that's for that. Um, select everything. Press Shift S. And zoom back in. Use the fifty percent. Still hundred percent. Do you get to see it? Now this particular point here, I press Shift L to make it a sharp point. And then try and this off share like that. Let's now go and delete all this. And this background node, let's make it white. Connect this polygon node to the background node. This polygon, let's increase the border with weaved it. Uh, something like that. This is 0 0.01. System up bit stits so you can see how it looks. I go back to 50% so you can see it better. Andre this better. And it's just down a bit. Yeah. So we see that it's not particularly shapely here. I can delete this point so it needs a bit more. I can take this point too. It's a bit more interest from there. Become this scale like that. Prove the scale right this. Sorting that. Share it back there. And this. Hit this. And um, yeah, so this looks okay. So now we have a heart shape design here. Now we go to this polygon. The length of this doesn't look it something like this. Let's get to zoom from three. Going to be animate the position along something like that. So um, I can make it minus see here point one. And yeah, sorry, minus one actually. Then see go to the beginning. Keyframe this. And move to about let's say one eighteen, and then move the position like that, and move it like that, and let it go through to we get the end, and then we get to go. So if we play this, just see the tracks right, so we gain. Play that. Mm 
Now we have that animation going. We go to particle emitter, go to style, make this a blob, or we'll make the region to come from bitmap. So we connect this sweep here. We draw this renderer node here. Then we play it. Receive a start there. It's not looking so nice just yet. Let's go to particle emitter. Go to style. Go to size. Let's increase this to 0.5. So it's pretty obvious. Then we go here. We go to P emitter, press control space bar and look for G turbulence. Add that in here. Turbulence is too much. I go to P turbulence. I drop this to zero point. We'll fire. So point to fire. Two point zero fire. It's still too much. I go again to put zero point zero two. We're going to two. Here is basically two. The density is a bit. If we then increase it to almost 100, right? In fact, I want to drop this to 0 0.01. And 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Fantastic. So if we play this, see what happens there. Our particles up here. And then we have that going. You see that this it follows the path of the bitmap. Now I want to shorten the lifespan of the particles so I can go here and just drop it to like 60. Play it back again. It is nice. So now we're good to go on that. Let's start this polygon here. We have this going next. For those particles, let's increase the number to maybe 20. Lay it back again. Now, turbulence, I want to even adjust this in the least of this, so it's a bit more organic. Okay, we'll deal with this subsequently. Then turbulent, let me just increase this to 0 0.2. I think it's so, it's too, it's too fixed. 1, 2, 2. Okay, so this should look better. Now we're going to do several passes of this. Let me like see, three passes of it. So it looks nice, good. Now we copy all of this. No, let's just copy. Justice 3, copy, paste. You just want to make a copy of this too. So paste, connect that. Now this polygon is a connected share, and it's the same polygon across. And for this one, I'm going to add something called P flock. Now for this P flock, I want the strength of this to be like 0 0.01. Let's drive this to render to the viewer and play. So you see the particle is a little too much 0 0.05. Let's go up there. Okay, good. Now for this particular P flock, I want the color over time. If we go to sorry, I go to particle emitter, go to style. For the color, I want the color to change from to the red one. Then I want this particular emitter, the style to be bitmap. So I go here to the this polygon here and then I'll make a duplicate of it. Copy it, go there, paste. Then I'm going to delete this whole this point here, delete this point here, delete. And then here, yeah. 
Okay, it's closed it. Sorry, my bad. So we see that it's closed it. Now this, I will now make this. Let me try this in the viewer. So we have this. I'll make, I'll put this particular net. Go here and make it a bitmap and connect this here. And then if you go to the renderer, it goes here. And I clear this. I need to reduce the size of this. So I give about kilometer to style, drop the size to something manageable. Something like that. Something like this. Then a size of our life. I want the size to be pretty small. Yeah, the pretty middle go like that. Then and go to this drag it to the end. And connect this. So if we play this, the series move like that. And there's so much. Nope. If I go to particle limit, I'll go to control stroke this to 10. 10 is still too much. So stop it to 5. Drop the lifespan to 40. So that's better. So if I clear this. One number variance through now. Let's bound variance to keep back. So, okay, let's keep that. Something like that. And I want the P lock to be just slightly higher. So, it's there with five. And then you now go here. Let's drag a merge node. Drop this to the foreground. Drop this to the background. Drag this to the viewer. So let's play it. Okay. What I need is to do another level of this one. Copy this. Is to this here. Then this background there connects to this. And then what I want to do here is increase the turbulence of this one just a little bit more. And you four, so you find your four, so you find your four. And then we add to this merge here. And I want this the size of a life of this one to be changed like that. So you see here, but like that. And then I want this to have a bit of a glow. So I press control space bar, soft glow. I drop the glow size to about six and this to about 0 0.5. And let's see how this looks. The new hair. Increase that to 0 0.75. So now let's view how this looks. And we have something that goes like this, and then we have that going. Simple styles, or you can do in particular in the node. Connect this media out, then this here. There, and wave that. Pretty cool stuff in it. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. And that's what we've been able to do in this soft period of time. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And have a nice one, guys. So it is a very good long tutorial. Um, do like and subscribe. And take care of yourselves. Cheers.